We're back in our search for the worst action figure line based on a movie. And today we're going to look at action figures and dragons. Oh. <laughs> Welcome back to the Junk Room, everybody. It's me, the Junk Man, coming back at you with a new video. What we got in store for you today? Well, the search continues with our search for the worst movie line action figure line ever. Last week, we told you about the horrible Mission Impossible line. And this week, we're going to look at action figures from the cult classic film, Dragonheart. But before we get into that, as always, if you'd like to support this channel, go over to our Patreon site. The link is up there or in the description below. There you can come, become a Patreon supporter and get a lot of exclusive contents like commentaries on video, early videos, sometime. I get really excited to get, share videos with you guys, so I don't want to wait sometime. And... What else we got? Commentary and more. Every Sunday will be something for you guys on the Patreon site. If you want to support us in another way, head over to thatjunkman.com and buy some cool t-shirts. Like this Kenner t-shirt we have there. We also have a Toy Biz shirt. Don't believe me? Go take a look at thatjunkman.com. Now, let's get back to the search for the worst action figure line based on a film. 1,000 years ago, there lived a man of honor and a creature of legend. Slayer, that is. I personally have seen him slay almost two dragons. I haven't had this sort of challenge in some time. Not likely to again. Our next stop for the search for the worst movie-based action figure line stops us in Cincinnati at the Kenner's headquarters. Sorry, Kenner. You've made some great action figures in your time, like Star Wars, Superpowers, and Jurassic Park. But even a great company like Kenner makes mistakes. And Kenner, you did make a mistake with this 1996 action figure line based on the fantasy film Dragonheart. The film stars Dennis Quaid and Sean Connery as the voice of the dragon. The film tanked at the box office, raking in only $51 million and landing at number 30 for the top grossing film of that year. However, the film has since became a cult classic and a string of straight-to-video sequels. Kenner was never shy about doing action figures based on a movie. And here they were, thinking they had their hands on their next Jurassic Park. The line has six action figures and four dragons. There was a seventh figure that came along with one of the dragons. With the making of this line, oddly, Kenner did something totally different than they've been doing with their action figure line. They scaled down the action figures to about three inches and gave them an action figure pose. They were always stuck in that one position. Their arms did swivel up and down and their heads did turn, but mostly you just had them in an awkward, weird action pose. Now as we search for the worst movie tie-in action figure line, we look at five categories and rate each one of these categories with a five-star system. Let's go back to last week and I'll explain the whole rating again in case you haven't watched that video. First up, we're going to look at the look of the action figure. Does the action figure look like what we see in the movie? Do they dress the same? Does it look like the actors that the film's based on? Are these figures worth playing with as a kid? Would kids enjoy playing with something like this, even if maybe they don't look like what they do in the movie? Did the toy company time it right? Did they release the action figures way too early to where the time the movie came out no one cared? Or did they release the action figures way too late where kids just moved on and didn't care either way? To sell kids on action figures, you gotta catch their eye, and the packaging does that. Look at the vintage Star Wars action figure cards. Your eyes are gonna connect with the package, and it's gonna call kids to pick up the action figure, look at it, and decide if they want it. Do these figures hold up? Sure, we can all buy an action figure and stand it up somewhere, and it will last for a couple years. But does it stand up to kids throwing them off dressers and against the wall? Now that you see how we're doing the ratings, let's look at each category and rate the Dragonheart action figure line. The face of the humans do look a lot like the characters in the film. Again, these are small, three-inch figures, and it's amazing that Kenner was able to get the details of the actors on such a small figure. However, making these in the posing action makes them look cheap and boring, almost like something you would find in a bubblegum machine. To a kid at a toy store, at a glance, these look more like little statues than action figures. Very little would even move on them. The arms and neck was about it. On the other hand, the dragons for the line looked amazing. The color is pretty spot on with the film, 
and they're really, really well done. And you can tell a lot of detail and care was given to each dragon by the Kenner designers. For the look of these figures, it could have been a 5 for 5 if this was just a dragon line. But sadly, there's action figures in this line also. So the look of these smaller action figures are going to really taint the look of the figures. While the dragons are outstanding, the figures are horrible. So, out of a 5 point rating system, the look of the Dragonheart action figures gets a 3 out of 5. Now, let's look at play value. The dragons were a great addition to this line. But what brings down this line, yet again, is the action figure. Again, they are small and one piece. The legs don't move and they're always stuck in a weird action pose. I do understand Kenner's plan to make these smaller, that way the dragons look bigger. But there was no reason at all for Kenner to give them odd poses. These odd, hard action poses make them very boring to play with. Every action figure did come with its flag, a bow, and shield, and other accessories. The dragons are again really well done and fun to play with. If you were a kid that loved dragons, this was a dragon toy for you. There was also an electronic talking dragon that had the voice of Sean Connery and it's probably the best dragon in this line. Again, the problem with this line is the action figures. They really seem out of place and like they're part of a whole different toy line. They have no real play value with the dragons. They can't ride on it. They can't sit on it. They can't interact much with the dragons at all. Once again, the action figures in this line bring down the overall rating of this toy line. If Kenner had gotten the action figures right, we could be looking at one of the best action figure lines of the 90s. But here, due to the play value of the action figures, sadly, this rating is going to be 2 out of 5. Now that we got the look and the play value out of the way, Let's look at the marketing. Did Kenner market this right? Well, let's take a look. The Dragonheart line hit stores months before the release of the film, making them widely available for fans of the film after seeing it. Most figures and dragons were easy to find at toy stores. With a toy based on a film, you need to have them at stores before the movie launches to help promote the film and so that stores will have it in stock after the release. I really can't find anything wrong here to fault against the marketing of these figures. They were released a few months before the film and very well stocked by the time of the release of the film. So, out of the rating system for marketing, I'm going to have to give this line 5 out of 5 stars. Now that we looked at all that, let's look at the packaging. Does it catch the kids' eyes? Well, let's take a look. First, let's look at the action figures of this line. Each figure had mostly the same card other than the top left corner where there was a picture of the figure and its accessories. The package was sure to catch the eye of a kid into dragons. The dragon itself can clearly be seen on the card. The title is bold and easy to read. The figure inside is clearly seen and you can see all the accessories that come with it so you'll know what you'll get for your money. The back of the card shows the figure and the dragons in the line and a little detail about the story. It would have been nice if the figure had, had some character photo from the film, but it's not really needed as you needed the space to show what all came with the horrible action figure inside. The dragons were also sold on a card. But because of their size, they were not put together in the package, so you saw the dragon without its wings, and this really didn't help sell the dragon or be seen as something fun to play with. You couldn't really tell what was the extra part and what was part of the dragon. Also, the bubble that held the dragon in was so big that it covered up most of the dragon on the card. At the bottom of the bubble was a photo of the dragon action figure, when it would have made more sense and probably been more eye-catching if they used a dragon from the film. The package for these figures are not bad. It's not great either. There's a lot they could have done to maybe catch the eyes of kids a little bit more, but if you're a kid in the dragons, I think it did its job. But reaching beyond that, don't really think it was enough on a card to get kids to pick it up, look at it, and beg their parents for it. So the rating out of the packaging, we're going to give this line 3 out of 5 stars. And now the final ranking, the quality. These figures were small, but pretty tough. It didn't look like much, but you could throw these action figures around the room and it really wouldn't hurt the action figure at all. The accessories are small also, but none of them would break really easy. As for the dragons, they also held up pretty good. Sure, it could be damaged with harsh play over time, but that's almost any toy. Here, when it comes to the quality of these action figures, although I might not like the look of the small action figures, the quality is really good. 
In fact, being the hard plastic and pose action figures they are, they stand up a lot better than most figures with heavy play. So the star rating for the quality of these action figures is going to get a 5 out of 5. So that's a look at the ratings, but overall, how does this do in our search for the worst movie action figure line? Well, honestly, back in the 90s, I thought this was one of the worst toy lines ever made. And I often see it on people's list of the worst 90s action figure line. But doing this review, I was shocked at the outcome. If you judge this action figure line by the humans, it's a horrible looking action figure line. But what sells this action figure line is not the humans, it's the dragons. And that's what the kids wanted was the dragons. If Kenner had done the action figure line more like the Jurassic Park action figures and released the dragons along with that, this line could have been one of the greatest lines of the 90s. Looking back at this line, now over 20 years old, it's not as bad as I thought or what everyone kept saying. Again, the worst part of this line is the action figures itself and that stupid action pose. So our final rating on the Dragonheart action figure line out of five stars, I'm gonna give this one four stars. Again, I can't find anything really bad with this line other than the action figures, their size, and the stupid action pose. The dragons look amazing. The quality of the figures hold up with rough play. The marketing hit everything just right. And the packaging was maybe not the best it could be, but it wasn't bad either. I'm honestly shocked at this rating here. When I talked with you guys on Twitter, and looked around the internet about the worst movie tie-in action figure lines ever, Dragonheart was always up there. And from my memory, I hated it also. So when I started to do this video, I thought, here we go, this is gonna be a two-star rating action figure line, and it might actually win the worst movie line. However, when looking at these five points of the action figure line, I can't say these are a bad action figure line. Again, I hate the poses, and I hate the size of the action figure, but again, the focus here was on the dragons, not the action figures. This here is clearly not the worst action figure based on a movie. Maybe next week we will find the worst action figure line based on a movie. Together, we will own this town. Thank you for watching. Don't forget we'll be back next Tuesday with episode 3 of our search for the worst action figure line based on a film. And we'll have videos throughout the week. Until we talk again... Thank you for watching. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony. <laughs>